I discovered textiles, I realized that it was a different world. It wasn't the world where you had to be this colossal ego genius that nobody could touch, nobody could understand. How do you do what you do? We could do something quite simple and give the world this drunken pool of color, you know? We could turn them on to something that is so vital and life enhancing in a very simple way by just creating textiles and saying, play with these. Here's a paint box, do something wonderful. And the world did fabulous, wonderful things. So I like that better than being somebody who produces masterpieces that nobody else can do. It's not unique what we do, but it's powerful. I started my creative life trying to be a fine arts painter, interested only in white paintings. Eventually I got bored with that and started to bring in color, but I realized that color was better if it was organized into patterns, which I found on the pottery. I also found patchwork quilts and embroidered cloth and so forth had great atmosphere. And that's when I began to be really interested in the patchwork world. That is the CAIF Collective, myself, joined by two wonderful talents, Philip Jacobs and Brandon Mabley. Brandon particularly is interested in ethnic cultures. It has a wonderful boldness about it. Here's Philip. He has beautiful talent for creating uh, botanical designs, as well as vintage designs from France and the Orient and old English designs. And then I put them into my own colorways. I mean, I've had many shows in museums around the world, and usually it's just my work or my work and Brandon's work, but it was incredible to have a show where everybody else had been the creator, but using our paint box. I mean, it's the highest compliment when we've uh, given birth to uh, a piece of artwork, and then somebody will take that medium and make it their own. It's like planting it a seed and they grow an apple tree. Um, and then hopefully that will then go on and inspire somebody else with saying, oh, then I think I could do this or I might do it in my own possible way. Yeah. And, and to us, it's... That, that's always our aim in an exhibition, is to inspire people. So we've been invited to this chap called Danny Amadeus. He's from Taiwan. Um, I would say he's in his late 60s, early 70s, and he's created this phenomenal piece where he takes our fabric and he cuts it up into little scrap pieces, glues it down, over stitches, job done. That he's not interested in doing a quilt. He's doing um, a fabric collage wall piece, and this is like planets. Yeah, this is planets, but another artist in New Zealand made a huge head covered with our fabrics. You know, I mean, just amazing. It's kind of a self-portrait. And then others have done very delicate little vignettes of flowers and vases and so forth. So it's, uh, it's lots of different approaches. One of my favorite pieces is a zebra head where they've done a fabric collage of all our fabrics and then overlaid it with a netting and overstitched so it's just a very quiet veil of um, our fabrics, but seeing how the colors come through in a very mysterious way. And when you look at that piece, you'll see a little fish, a little turtle and a flower. And you think it's like a tattoo that is just underneath a wedding dress or something. It's so incredibly beautiful. I would say the thing that keeps both of us incredibly motivated is the way the world uses our fabrics. You know, this exhibition is a demonstration 
of what keeps us juicy and cooking, you know, uh, that we make these patterns and they go out into the world. But also all the work that we do has the, the smallest, most least amount of technical abilities. We're only interested in how the colors are held together with the most simplest of techniques. And it, the colors do the work for you. It's um, once you start and just stop allowing yourself to play, bypass the brain, just let the colors speak to you. Just start putting out the, a palette of colors in front of you and just start seeing how those colors speak to you. You'll get a reaction and hopefully the fun will start to begin for you. The thing about COVID was it made us all stop. Go home, pull yourself together, start to think of what's gonna make you sane. You know, you, you, maybe it's gonna be music, maybe it's gonna be a wonderful book or a library full of books, or maybe it's going to be using your hands to create something. And our group found that buying fabric and making patchwork and stitching needlepoint was what turned them on, what kept them sane and excited about life. But it was a time of reflection, of stopping and finding those resources in yourself, I think. And of course that's gone on because people have found something of wonderful satisfaction of working with their hands and creating. It's, it's the key to a lot of people's happiness. And we get people coming up to us all the time and saying, you know, you can't believe what you did for me in the 1970s and 80s when I discovered your knitting and I began to realize I could be free to create anything I wanted and use color in a passionate way. Uh, people needed permission to do that and we gave it to them.